In this screencast, we will be solving equations from graphs and tables, and the equations we end up solving may not be linear. For example, we will be solving this equation here. Notice that this is not linear because there's a third power on the variable x. So we will be solving equations by looking at graphs and tables. We will not actually be doing any computations by hand. This is to see if you can see the relationship between this two variable input output rule and this corresponding one variable equation. So we're going to do this with graphs, and we're also going to do with this with tables. So here is the graph of y equals x cubed minus 7x minus 6. Again, it's not a linear relationship. You can even see it graphically. A linear relationship forms a straight line. This certainly is not a straight line curve. However, there's a connection between this two variable input output rule and these one variable equations. And the connection is precisely this. I'm going to first just rewrite this above these equations here. I've got x cubed minus 7x minus 6 equals y. If you notice, I just flipped the two sides around here. These, of course, are the same thing. So the connection between this two variable equation, which has a graph in two dimensions, and this one variable equation is the rule is exactly the same. x cubed minus 7x minus 6, x cubed minus 7x minus 6. This zero is a particular case of y. And down here, when we look at this one, the rule is the same, and then this negative 12 is a specific case of y. So to solve this first equation, we need to find the points on the curve that have a y value of zero. And then once we find the points that have a y value of zero, the corresponding x values are the solutions to this equation. So let's find the points that have a y value of zero. Well, if you traced along this curve, you could see this one right here has a y value of zero, this one has a y value of zero, and this one has a y value of zero. So there's three different points, and let's note them in blue. There's three different points that have a y value of zero. And the corresponding x values on these points are negative 2, negative 1, and 3. Negative 2, negative 1, and 3 are the solutions to this equation. So x equals negative 2, negative 1, and three are the solutions to this equation. Notice we did absolutely no computations whatsoever, and notice that the solutions are just the x values. They're not ordered pairs. Ordered pairs are solutions to two variable equations. This is really just a one variable equation. So this is really a special case of this input-output rule. Let's do the same thing with this equation here. The relationship between the two variable equation and the one variable equation is that this is a specific instance of this input output rule precisely when y is negative 12. So we want to find the points on the curve with a y value of negative 12. So if we trace along, this point right here has a y value of negative 12. If you keep going, you got another one here, and then you got another one right here. So there can be more than one solution to nonlinear equations, as you can see here. So let's put in red this particular points. Each one of these three red points has a y coordinate of negative 12. Now to get the solution to this equation, all you need to do is find the x coordinates of these points. The x coordinate of this point is negative 3, the x coordinate of this point is 1, and the x coordinate of this one is 2. So those are our three solutions here. x equals negative 3, 1, and 2. There's three different solutions to this equation. And notice again, there's absolutely no computation. We're simply looking at this graph to get the solutions over here. And then this final one, we want to approximate the solution to this equation. And in this case, they're essentially giving us a particular y value of 4. So we want to find the points on the curve that have a y value of 4. Let's do this in yellow. So we'll trace along the curve, and we need to find any and all points that have a y coordinate of 4 in this case. So if you travel here, we haven't gotten up to a y value of 4. So you notice only right here, this one point right here, has a y value of 4. So we're going to mark that in yellow. Now that is only, there's only one point on the curve that has a, a y value of 4. So that means there's only one solution to this equation. And the solution to this equation is going to be the corresponding x value. So notice we're a little bit past 3, but not nearly as close to 4. So this is somewhere around 3.1. So we'll put in x is approximately 3.1. Again, we've done no computations to get the solutions to these three equations. We took a look at the graph of the two-variable equation that's related to these three.
Let's do this again now, but with a table instead. Here we've got an input output table, and the rule for this input output table is precisely right here. Y is equal to one over the sum of X and one. This also is a nonlinear equation. However, again, we are not going to be solving these equations by hand over here. We're gonna be using this input output rule that's related to these equations in some way. So again, I'm gonna just simply rewrite the input output rule over top of these equations here. And I'm gonna write it with the one over X plus one first, just so it's in line with things. You don't have to rewrite this, it's just doing this for visual purposes. So this is a two variable input output rule. This is a one variable equation. However, notice the rule part is the same, one divided by the sum of X and one. So they're essentially giving us a specific Y value of one. So instead of tracing a curve and finding the points that have a y value of one, like we did on the previous screen, we're gonna look for the y values of one in the input output table. So if you notice here, we've got a y value of one right here. And just like in the graph, once we found the point, we then needed the x value. Once you found this point, we then need the x value. That x value is the solution to your equation. x equals zero. And that's it. There's no computation here. We're simply using this input output rule to be able to find the solution to these equations. Let's try this one. In this case, one over X plus one, that's our rule equals one half. So they're giving us a Y value of one half. Well, make sure again, you're looking for a Y value of one half because notice here, there's an X value of one half. This is a particular Y value. So right here, this point has a particular Y value of one half. So the corresponding X value is precisely one. So x equals one is the solution to this equation, no computation at all. Let's now mix in a little bit of practice with function notation. The input output rule, y equals one over x plus one, y is a function of x. So we could technically write it as f of x equals one over x plus one. We want to use this to now answer these questions. We want to first find f of one. Now don't forget, function notation is always of the following form, f or g or whatever the name of the function is, and then in parentheses next to that is the input, and f of the input is equal the, to the output. So when you're looking at this, is this one an input or an output? And then they say find f of one, that one is precisely an input. So that means we wanna go over to the table and find the point that has a, an x value, an input of one. And notice that's right here. This point has an x value of one. And then just like we, when they gave us a y value, we found the corresponding x value. Now they're giving us an x value. We want to find the corresponding y value. So f of one is saying, what's the y value that goes with the input of one? And the y value that goes with the input of one is one half. So this is y equals one half. Or you could write f of one equals one half. Either way, same thing. However, do not write x equals one half. It is not an x value that we were getting. Now what's different about this one, or is this the same question? Find f of, solve f of x equals one for x. The big difference here is this one now is not an input. This one is the output. So we wanna find the point or points in the table that have an output of one. And that's precisely right here. That's the only point that has a y value of one. Then the corresponding x value is zero. So x equals zero is the solution to this equation. And notice this right here actually is exactly the same question as this. Here we're simply using the function notation. Here we were not. So again, we use the input output rule to solve the corresponding equations. There were no computations at all to get these solutions here.